All right, here we are at another Nano Studio 2 tutorial. And this tutorial is gonna look at the Obsidian Sampler, crossfades, velocity splits, and so forth for sort of a more full and realistic instrument. And we'll look at its unique option called Spectral Looping. And we'll also look at sort of a solution to um, track recording. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Audio tracks are coming in sometime in the new year, but until then, there's a built-in solution where you can use the sampler to do your track recording, and we'll look at that a bit as well. And just one more note, uh, for this recording, I didn't exactly use any really good gear, so actually I just basically used the mic input on the iPad, so, you know, and the audio is not gonna be very good. As a matter of fact, it might be some of the worst sampling you've ever heard. All right, so we get to the Obsidian Sampler simply by loading up the sample variant uh, in the oscillator here in Obsidian. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press this record sample button here. We're gonna arm the threshold so the sampler doesn't start sampling until the uh, signal level has reached that threshold. So we're just gonna speak into the microphone and you know just get a silly little sample here. Hello. And there's our recording. You see, because we are on the threshold, the recording is basically started right at the beginning of that phrase. And we'll just chop off this little end piece here. And I guess probably a good idea to fade out the last part. So we'll go to volume and tap on fade out. Now let's try to find a little cycle here where we can find a nice little loop point. Not going to be too specific with this, just going to find a single cycle and loop it. Zooming in with pinch to zoom. And we can use the selection zoom, selection begin. to zoom into the beginning of the selection, sort of get that zero crossing at the beginning. And then zoom to end of that selection to get the zero crossing at the end. Looping it to hear what it sounds like here with this loop icon. That sounds about right. So we'll go to actions and set sustain loop. And we'll save that. And now there you go. We have our sample loaded up as a single zone in the Obsidian Sampler and we can trigger it with the notes and has loop already armed by default. Hello. 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 I warned you guys, it's, <laughs> it's not a very good sample, but it's a demonstration. So. Hearing the um, sample being played back, I heard some noise there, obviously. Visually, I can identify the noise. You can kind of see it right there, that where all those transient peaks are, those ugly peaks, and we'll just chop that out, and we'll audition it, and... Hello? Hello? Yeah, no, I still hear some noise there, so I identify that it's kind of in this section here. I'm probably mangling the sample even further, but again, we're just demonstrating how this works. Here, I'll have to get out that little errant extra cycle there, trying to make perfect cycles, and we'll use the fade in with a very zoomed in vantage point. Hello? That sounds a little better. But I should chop out a little bit more, and there's another errant cycle. A lot we can fix by zooming in. Just chop out the whole part right there. Line it up and hit delete. Looks about right. Hello, hello. 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 No, there's still a little click hello. there at the end, but oh well. I mean, we could be a little bit more precise if we really wanted to be. All right, so from here, we can set the uh, root note in that zone. We can turn looping on and off. Uh, we can set the direction, so the sustain loop, the direction of the sustain loop, you might get more mileage out of that if you change that. And we can uh, resize that zone easily by just tapping and dragging the minimum and maximum settings. And see, I was unable to add a new zone there because we've already taken up the maximum span of the keyboard with that one zone, so we'll have to just simply resize that max value. And now we can add a new zone. 
can just cross fade a little bit here to get a little bit more of a smooth transition with the next sample we use. You're not always going to want to use that and sometimes it could create phasing, um, especially with the case of some delicate instruments. It may not sound right with upper harmonics, so I have to keep that in mind and listen for that cross fading. So moving away from the recorded sample, we'll now look at um, samples that have been recorded previously and we're you know, importing into Obsidian. We'll sort of be able to look at how it's able to handle that. So we'll load up a patch here from the Acoustic Volume 1 library, Damp Piano. I mean, you can see here we have a bunch of different zones set across the keyboard range and they're all cross-faded. You can zoom in. So let's just show you how to easily load up those samples. I've pre-labeled each sample with its note at the end there, and you see a little note of its own kind uh, here where it says auto map. And basically if you put the note type along with the number, remember that part, at the very end of the file name, it will know how and where to map it. So we'll just tap on auto map samples and choose any one sample and there you go, it auto maps it. There's no cross fades but there is looping by default. And you can set all of these parameters individually by note, or you can use a much more handier uh, method here where you tap on the settings icon. You can set the sample loop for all notes across the entire range, or set key cross fades, very useful settings here. That makes your work a lot easier. So I've set sample loop for all the uh, sample zones. There you go, you see that they're all set now and now we can turn them off. Turning it back on. Let's now set the key crossfades and we'll determine it to be five semitones where the overlap occurs. And there you go. Pretty much a fully set up instrument. So we have multiple zones, we have key zone crossfading. You know, we're pretty close to a full featured sampler. The only thing missing is velocity control. However, it's not missing. It's all controlled in a tab here where it says VEL. And just like in the Slate instrument, you can determine the velocity split either not as a real split, but as a layering, in which case oscillator one, two, and three, they just layer over top of each other. Just the normal functionality of Obsidian that you're used to or you can split by two zones or three zones. So if you sampled a real instrument, this would be quite useful if you did three different velocity samplings, you know, at a low velocity on a, on a note, uh, mid velocity and high velocity, and each one of those low, mid, high gets set up in the sampler uh, and split up across those three oscillators. You can also cross fade the velocity splits so that there's maybe a little bit more, it's not a jarring shift because it is only three velocity zones, but any more than that, and it might become unmanageable. So next we'll look at the spectral looping option, which is a really interesting, cool feature. I'll just, you know, quickly show you this. I've got a kind of a, you know, single sample, it's monophonic, it's not the best example, but it maybe will show you sort of how it transforms the sample and opens up a whole array of options. <laughs> got this piano sample. Doesn't sound very good because it's only a single sample, transposed. So now here we have set it to loop all in the spectral mode. This will basically create a spectral sample based on the entire waveform, not just the sustain part. If you choose loop sustain, it will base that spectral analysis off of the sustain only. So as you see, the spectral mode basically creates a perfect loop. You don't have to worry about loop points. So it's a really interesting and unique function that I found particularly useful for making soundscapes. You can just create an immense amount of things from literally just dropping a penny on the table and, and sampling that. Okay, now we'll turn to demonstrating, I guess, sort of a workaround to the uh, track recording option. You know, here I'm going to again use the mic input. Obviously it'd be better suited if you had some sort of proper interface, some sort of good line level signal, or a good microphone. In which case you can record audio tracks, you just have to do it through the Obsidian sampler. 
And there's maybe some rules of thumb to keep in mind that will help you make use of that better until audio tracks eventually come. This should hopefully work for you. We'll arm the recording. And I'm monitoring the uh, click track in my headphones, so I'm trying to play on beat. I'm just tapping the table. It's obviously a very bad recording. All right, so I can right away see that that first beat has to be closer up to the edge. So I'm just gonna zoom up there and delete all that silence, basically. And the reason I decided to record a beat is just because the main concern when recording in the sampler this way, an audio track, is to make sure everything is lined up. You know, that the recorded beat or vocal take or guitar performance or whatever it might be is lined up with your MIDI recording, All right? So I chose a beat because that's where it'd be most obvious things aren't lining up. But just to show you that actually with a very minimal editing, you can actually uh, make short order of that. All right, so probably the first thing I'll do is just chop off this totally useless part at the end here. So I've turned on the beat grid, which will set up a grid according to the, uh, the global tempo, which you'll see at the top is 150 BPM. And I'm sort of looking at where those beats land relative to those slice points. See how it sounds in the mix and I'm labeling this bad beat. And, uh, We'll set the root note to C3, and that's where we're going to want to trigger it without any transposition. So we'll just draw in an empty track here and enter a note on C3. And I want the beat only to go two bars here, so we'll just drag that note out to the end of two bars. We'll hear how this sounds. Yeah, so we kind of, you know, weren't very precise about it, and as you can hear, it lines up nicely, but it should suit your purpose. You can do some further editing. We'll cut out that little part that we can see is off the beat grid, and we'll snap the beat grid back with a little double tap of it, and we'll paste it right on that beat. Uh. All right, so not too, too bad. I mean, for a really sloppily played beat, uh, you know, sort of a one-off recording. And with some minimal editing, you just slap it right in the mix and it actually kind of works. And again, this is a workaround to eventually having the option of recording audio tracks directly. One other note on sampling this way for this purpose, uh, if you're worried about sampling time or anything like that, you shouldn't have to worry because I think there's a two hour sampling limit in the sampler, so, you're probably limited by your device storage at that point. So anyways, this is just a sort of overview of the sampling options in the Obsidian Synthesizer slash sampler. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.